All right, so uh, again, this section is called Sum and Difference Formulas. Uh, everything you need to know for this section is on this screen right here. These are your sum and difference formulas or addition and subtraction formulas, same thing, okay? And what we do with these is we use these to find um, either the sine or the cosine or the tangent of an angle that's not unit circle base but can be broken down into the sum or difference that is. And then you'll also see how we'll use these, um, like with triangles, you can use them as well. So the pattern, you need to memorize all these. The pattern for sine is sine, cosine, cosine, sine. So you find the sine of the first angle <coughs> times it by the cosine of the second angle. And then the sine, positive or negative sine, is going to match on sine. So if it's a sum, then it stays a sum. So it would be sine times cosine plus cosine of that first angle times sine of the second angle. And then if it's sine of an angle minus another angle, then it's sine, cosine, cosine, sine again. But this time it's a difference. So the positive or negative sine on sine matches. Then you get to cosine, and the pattern for cosine is cosine, cosine, sine, sine. And this is the opposite sign. So where if it's positive, it would be a difference. It's minus here, it becomes addition. Good morning. And then you've got tangent. So the tangent of the sum of two angles, I do the sum of those in the top, and then one minus the difference in the bottom. So add the two tangents together, and then one minus the product of those tangents. And then tangent for a subtraction, this time the sign in the top matches. So sine minus, I mean, sorry, tangent minus tangent, and then one plus tangent times tangent. So for me, easiest thing to do is like figure out your pattern. Sine is sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Cosine is cosine, cosine, sine, sine. Remember if it matches the sine or doesn't, so sine matches, cosine's the opposite. And then tangent is always the match in the top and then the opposite, one with the opposite of the product in the bottom. But you need to have these memorized. So now I think there's a, a Quizlet on there. I actually don't know if it's published, I'll look. Um, that's got everything you need from 5.1 to 5.4. So it's got all the identities and all that stuff from 5.1 and 5.2. And then it gets into sum and difference with this stuff. Obviously, you want to start getting used to those because a lot of you, if you got hung up on the test, I mean on the quiz, it, some of it was just not knowing your identities. You don't want that to be what kills you, okay? All right, so they'll start to look something like this. This says find the exact value of each expression. So we're going to break this down in terms of sum and difference. Sometimes you can do, like, sometimes I can actually add the angle inside and find that on my unit circle, but obviously if I add 120 and 45, I get 165, right? And that's not on your unit circle. So that's the idea here. If I actually tried to add those and find the cosine, you couldn't do it without a calculator because 165 is not on my unit circle. But if I use the patterns of sum and difference, I can break it down to where it would be angles on my unit circle. So this one's cosine, and the pattern for cosine is cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So I'm going to do the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle. And then I do the opposite of the sine for, for cosine. So it's minus sine of the first, sine of the second. You with me so far? Now these are unit circle based angles. So if I want to pull in the unit circle so you can reference it. I would go to where cosine is or where the angle is 120 degrees, which is here. And I want the cosine there, which is negative one half. And then I'm going to go to where it's 45. And I want the cosine there, which is root two over two minus the sine at 120 which is negative, or sorry, positive, root three over two. And the sine at 45, which is root two over two. And then we multiply and simplify. So this would be negative root two over four minus root six over four. And I rewrite it as negative root two minus root six all over four. Sometimes on standardized tests, it will take out the common factor. So it will actually take out 
root two over four. Actually, it usually does root, yeah. And then it will do negative one plus root three. Like you'll see it written like that. That's the same thing. Open-ended, I'll take either one. But just realize that if it's a multiple choice standardized test, they like to take out that root, three, root two over four. Okay, so sometimes it's in degrees, sometimes it's in radians. The next one is sine. What's the pattern for sine? Sine, sine cosine, right? This is the one that's different. So it's sine of the first, cosine of the second. This time we keep the sine the same, so it's minus cosine of the first, sine of the second. Now, 7 pi over 3 is not on my unit circle, right? But that is the same thing as 2 and 1 third pi, yes? So where is 2 and 1 third pi? On the right hand side at that over 3, right? Because I would have gone all the way around the circle once and then to the pi over 3 past it. So the sign there is root 3 over 2. The cosine at the same angle is one half. Cosine, again, one half. Sine, root three over two. And I get root three over four minus root three over four, which is zero over four or zero. So this time, if you look at what was given to you at the beginning, you can actually have simplified that. 7 pi over 3 minus pi over 3 would be 6 pi over 3, which is 2 pi. And then I would just need the sine at that, which is 0. Sometimes you can simplify it. Most of the time you won't be able to do it. Like on the test or whatever, it will be a point that you can't simplify. So you you're forced to do the difference or the sum. But obviously, sometimes you want to check to see if you can simplify it. Questions so far? All right, now it says find the exact value of the sine, cosine, and tangent of the angle by using sum or difference formulas. So now they're not already broken down into a sum or difference. You have to figure out angles that are on your unit circle that either add up to this value or when you find the difference, they're this value. And there's more than one way to do this. Okay, so if I look at 105 and you're thinking about your unit circle angles, what two angles add up to 105 that are on your unit circle? I'll give you a hint. If it ends in a 5, it has to involve 45. Yes? So what happens if I subtract 45? 60. Are 60 and 45 both on my unit circle? Yeah. So I'm going to do 60 and 45. You could have also done 135 minus 30, right? So there's multiple answers here to get to, well, not answers, they're all the same, but there's multiple paths to take to get to that answer. All right, so now I'm going to do the sine of these two, and then I'm going to do the cosine of these two, and then I'm going to do the tangent. So this is first quadrant. Hopefully we know this, right? 45 degrees is root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. 60 degrees is 1 half root 2 over, or root 3 over 2. So the sine pattern is sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Sine of the first, cosine of the second. Match the sine, cosine of the first, sine of the second. Sine at 60 is root 3 over 2. Cosine at 45 is root 2 over 2. Cosine at 60 is 1 half. Sine at 45 is root 2 over 2. Root 6 plus root 2 over 4 or root 3 minus 1. Plus 1, sorry. Either answer works. Questions on that one?
Okay, then I go to cosine. So what's the pattern for cosine? Cosine minus sine. Good. Cosine, cosine, sine, sine. Change the sign in between, right? So this would be cosine 60, cosine 45, minus sine 60, sine 45. Cosine at 60, 1 half. Cosine at 45, root 2 over 2. Sine at 60, root 3 over 2. Sine at 45, root 2 over 2. Yeah, sure. So good question. If you already get sine and cosine, can you just put sine over cosine? The answer is there's yes. That's absolutely right. Often, you're not going to get all three. Uh, so that's all. You just want to make sure you know how to get to both. Like I'm on the, on the test, you're not going to get all three on one question. So just make sure you know how to get direct to each one. But absolutely, if you already had the sine and the cosine, you can go back up there. So I could have taken the sine and I could have put it over the cosine. So root 6 plus root 2 over 4 divided by root 2 minus root 6 over 4. Keep change flip. And then you still want to rationalize it to get rid of that square root. And you'd end up with the same answer. Okay. But again, it'll probably, like I know on your test, I'll separate it out. So you won't get all three of those. Okay, so now look at B. 285. What are two things that when I add them together on unit circle base, what, when I add them together, they would be 285? Good morning, sir. Bless you.
All right, so again, it doesn't have to be exactly this because if you pick different angles, your order might be different, but the value should be the same and the sign should be the same. So if you did the 240 and the 45, then you should have got a negative root 6 minus root 2 over 4. If you switch them, if you did 45 and 240, then it just should be negative root 2 minus root 6 over 4. It doesn't matter the order as long as the signs are both negative. And then if you take out the root 2 over 4, it's root 2 over 4 times negative root 3 minus 1 or negative 1 minus root 3. Again, order is not important. For cosine, it should have been negative root 2 and positive root 6 over 4. And then for tangent, you should have gotten negative root 3 and negative 2. So again, it could be negative 2 minus root 3 or negative root 3 minus 2. It doesn't matter the order, but the values should be the same. Questions on those? So again, I know it's a lot of work to do all three. You're not gonna do all three every time. You just don't know if your version of the test is gonna have you do sine or cosine or tangent, you need to be prepared to do them all. Yeah. <coughs> For which one? For cosine. cosine should be negative root six plus root, no, sorry, negative root two plus root six over four. And then if you take out the root two over four, it should be root two over four times negative one plus root three. So order can be switched as long as the negative is on the root 2 and the positive is on the root 6. All right, now this is the reverse, and honestly, this is way easier. Now they're giving you the expanded expression, and you have to put it together into which one it initially falls. So the first thing you're looking for is what's the pattern. Is it sine, cosine, cosine, sine, where it'd be sine? Is it cosine, cosine, sine, sine, where it'd be cosine? Or does it have the word tangent in it, and it's tangent, okay? So from the first one, this is cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So which of the sum and difference am I looking at? Sure. Cosine. And with cosine, do you keep the sine or do you change it? Change it. Change it. So this becomes cosine of 25, and this is a minus, so it becomes plus 15. And then I get the cosine of 40. So this is just saying write it as a single expression. That's all you have to do. If it's unit circle based, once you condense, a lot of times it will actually ask you to find the exact value. Now I look at B and the word tangent there. So hopefully this is easy. Tangent, you match the sign in the numerator. So this is tangent of 2x plus x or tangent of 3x. Easy stuff, right? You just got to know your patterns and then know to either add them or subtract them. Match the sign or change it. Okay, now we're going to go one step further. We're going to take the expression that is expanded. We're going to write it as a single expression, and then you're going to actually find that. So once you condense it, it will be an angle that's on your unit circle, and then you can actually find that single value. All right, so they look like this. Now the directions say find the exact value of the expression. I'm looking for the pattern. So if it's sine, cosine, cosine, sine, which pattern is that? Sine. sine. And with sine, do you keep the sine the same or change it? Keep it the same. So this is going to be 330 minus 30. This is the sign of 300 degrees. Again, you can look at your unit circle. Go to where it's 300. And the sign there, which is the y, is negative root 3 over 2. And then B, it's got the word tangent in it. So I know it's tangent. Tangent, we match the sign in the numerator. So this is tangent of 25 plus 110. Tangent of 135. 135 is here. So the over 4. So it's 1. It's in the second quadrant. So it's negative. All right, so just like everything else that we did unit circle base, we also want to base it on triangles. So this says, suppose that the cosine of theta is negative 3 over 5 for quadrant 2 angle theta, and the cosine beta is 12 over 13 for quadrant 1 beta. Find the exact values of each of the following. The sine of theta, the sine of beta, the sine of theta plus beta, and the cosine of theta plus beta. So for all of these, you have to set up a triangle, right? And there's actually two different triangles happening here. One in which I've got cosine, or one in which I've got theta in the corner. And one in which I've got beta in the corner. So if the cosine of this one is negative 3 over 5, 
Where's the negative go? Three. On the three, because we don't do the, write the radius or the hypotenuse is never negative. So this would be negative three over five. And then I need to fill in the missing side. Now I should know the value of the missing side is what? What's the triple? Four, but how do I know if it's positive or negative? Why do you, how do you know that? Good, that's what this is giving you. Quadrant two means that I move left and I move up, right? So the three makes sense that that's negative, the four would be positive. This is obviously not drawn in the right direction, but as long as you can understand which one's supposed to be positive or negative, it doesn't matter. If you want to draw it in quadrant two, then I would start with my angle here, and I'd go back, negative three, up for my a hypotenuse is five, and I put theta there. If you want it to be like quadrant specific. Then the next one is beta, and what quadrant is beta in? Quadrant one, so everything's gonna be positive. Cosine is 12, which is adjacent. 13 is my hypotenuse. What's the missing side there? Five. I guarantee you're going to see triples again, so make sure you refresh your mind. Make life a little bit easier. So now A is asking for the sine of theta, which is this triangle. The sine would be opposite over hypotenuse or four fifths. B is asking for the sine of beta, which is this triangle, which is opposite over hypotenuse or five over 13. And now comes my sum and difference. So it says the sine of theta plus beta. Sine is sine, cosine, cosine, sine. So this is gonna be sine of theta, cosine of beta, Keep the sine the same, plus cosine of theta, sine of beta. Sine of theta was 4 fifths. Cosine of beta is my initial one that was given to me in the question or from my triangle, either way, 12 or 13. Cosine of theta, negative 3 fifths. Sine of beta, we found to be 5 thirteenths. So this is 48 over 65 plus a negative 15 over 65 and I get 33 over 65. Now I'm gonna repeat that process with cosine. What's the pattern for cosine? Cosine, cosine. Good, cosine, cosine change this sign good sine sine cosine of theta was it given to us in the beginning 12 over 13 cosine of beta also given to us negative three-fifths minus sine of theta we found to be four-fifths sine of beta five thirteenths and I get negative 36 over 65 minus 20 over 65, negative 56, over 65. Is how your identities are gonna come back into this section. So instead of doing specific, like there might be, I think there's two questions that are like verifying the trig identity, like on the quiz were kind of like that. You're also gonna see it pulled back into these sections. So if you remember, we used them in solving in 5.3, like if you had two different trig functions, you had to replace one, you're gonna see them that way, or you're gonna see them in some indifference like this. So this is prove the identity. It's not asking you to just restate sine of pi over two minus x as cosine of x. That is, an, it's a, this is a, your co-functions, right? We know that to be true. You're gonna prove it using your sum and difference formula. So on the left-hand side, it says the sine of pi over two minus x. So I'm gonna use the sum and difference formula of sine, which is sine of the first, cosine of the second. Keep your positive negative the same, so it's minus cosine of the first, sine of the second. Now I know nothing about x, but I do know that pi over two is at the top of my circle, and that coordinate point there is zero, one. So what's the sine at pi over two? One. What's the cosine at pi over two? Zero. And then zero, well one times cosine would be cosine. Zero times sine is gonna cancel out.
All right, last one says find all the solutions of the equation. The interval is 0 to 2 pi. This should be a parenthesis on the 2 pi. So now you've got your solving, which is the 5, 3, and you're pulling in your sum and difference. So the sum comes from sine. Again, I'm going to expand that. So this would be sine of x cosine of pi plus cosine of x sine of pi minus sine of x plus 1 equals 0. Again, I don't know anything about x, but I know pi. Pi is on the left side of my circle, which is negative 1, 0. So sine of x stays sine of x. Cosine at pi, negative 1, <coughs> plus cosine of x. Sine at pi, 0, minus sine of x, plus 1, equals 0. This is negative sine of x. This is gone. Minus sine of x, plus 1, equals 0. Negative 2 sine of x plus 1 equals 0. And then I need to solve it. So I'm going to subtract the 1. Divide by negative 2. And this time it gave me a fixed interval 0 to 2 pi. So I want to use my original unit circle and find the values for which sine, which is your y, is 1 half. And that's going to be at pi over 6 and at 5 pi over 6. I don't need to add on the n 2n pi because it's asking you to restrict the interval to 0 to 2 pi. Questions? So again, if you're like kind of fast forwarding to test, instead of seeing a bunch of traditional verify or evaluate <coughs> the trig identities, you're going to see it pulled back in in this kind of a fashion, like either in the solving with a sum and difference or in the solving from 5, 3, that kind of thing. Questions overall on sum and difference? <coughs>